of state machines. And now, in general, to compute the result of the composition of state machines. <coughs> The state machines that we're going to deal with are synchro state machines. Synchro state machines means that in our system, we will have a composition of communicating state machines. And all, all the state machines will react at the same time for simultaneously and instantaneously. Okay, this is the same type of synchro state machines that we have in state. First composition is a very simple series composition. So we have two state machines, A and B, defined according to our two poles of states, inputs, outputs, update function, and initial state. And the output of machine A is simply connected as the input of machine B. And again, according to our assumptions, the two machines are reacting simultaneously. Okay? So, what we can imagine is that the input to machine A, at the same time, results in a set of outputs for machine A. These outputs for machine A are the inputs to machine B, which result in the computation of new outputs for B. And we're interested, of course, in considering the union of the two machines as a single state machine. So, what we're interested in is to compute the definition of the composite. The definition of the composite means defining the elements of the tuple that define the, uh, that, that define the composite state machine. So, what are the states of the composite? What is the initial state of the composite? What is the input alphabet? What is the output alphabet? And what is the update function? Some of those things are pretty intuitive. Okay? So the inputs are clearly the input alphabet is going to be the same as the input alphabet of A. And the output is going to be the same as the output al alphabet of B. The connection between the two state machines is only possible if the output alphabet of A is a subset of the input set of values for B. This we remember from the rules for the legal connections of two systems. Okay, this goes even beyond the state machines. Then, what are all the possible states? Well, machine A can be in any one of its states. Machine B can be in any one of its states. So the composite, the state of the composite is simply the union of any possible state of A with any possible state of B. Or in other terms, the set of states for the composite is the Cartesian product of the set of states of the machine A by the set of states of the machine B. Okay? And similarly, the initial state is the pair consisting of the initial state of A and the initial state of B. Okay? What, is a, what may be a little bit more tricky is to compute what is the update function for the composition of the two state machines, but the update function can simply be computing according to the definition. Reasoning about a sort of executable semantics for this composition. So what is that we want? The update function means to define the new set of states for A and B that result from the state update when you have an input to A, an input of B, and a state for A, and a state for B. Okay? So what is going to be this new state for the composite? It's going to be, again, a state pair consisting of the next state of A and the next state of B. The next state of A can simply be computed by according to the definition. If you know the input of A, you know the current state of A, then you know the next state for A. So this part is pretty easy, and it is the part that you see here on the last but one row of the slide. The next state of B 
it's likely more complicated because now we don't know what are the inputs of B. Well, that's not too complicated because the inputs of B are the same as the outputs of A. And therefore, we simply need to compose the output of the eighth function of A to compute the inputs of B, which are here, Y A of N. And so once you have the outputs of A and the current state of B, you use the update state function of B to compute the new state of B. Okay? And similarly for the outputs. So let's see how this works in practice for, okay, as we already said, okay, before we go into this procedure, which is not necessarily the one I would recommend, let's, let's try one very simple example, okay? We compose two unit delays. What we want to get is a two unit delay, right? So let me first draw this composition this way. Okay. So we have this is A, this is B. And we want to compute the composite, which is S. <laughs> Inputs of A belong to the set 0, 1. And the same for the output of A, which is the same as the input of B, which is and generally the output of B belonging again to the set 0. Okay. If you remember, what is the state machine description of a unit delay for a binary input stream? It seems to be consisting of two states, 0, 1. If you have a 1, you go from 0 to 1, and you output 0. If you have a 0, you stay within 0, and you output 0. 0 is also the initial state. Okay. And then, if you have a 0 from 1, you go to 0, and you output 1. And if you get a 1, you stay in 1, and you output 1. And this is connected to another machine that is exactly the same. Zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, zero. And this is really short. Okay. So, let's apply our definitions. When we define the composite, what is the initial state for the composite? The initial state for the composite is a pair of initial state of A and initial state of B. Okay? We label the state as <coughs> 0, 0 from the names of the two initial states. This is the initial state for our composition. Okay? Now, let's apply all the possible inputs, and let's compute the update function here. Okay? So, first input that we can have is 0. If the input is 0, machine A will react according to this transition. So, the destination state for A will be, again, 0. This transition says that the output is going to be 0, so 0 is the output. Machine B will receive an input that is zero and will perform this transition here, going back to zero and producing zero as the output. So if we have zero as an input, we produce zero as an output, and we stay in zero zero. Let's see the other case. What if we get one? If we have a 1, we go from 0 to 1. So now the next state for A is 1. We produce 0 as an output, same as before. So if we have a 1, we go into a new state. That is the pair 1 for A and 0 for B. Now we go to 1, 0. We go 1. The output is still going to be 0. Okay? 
So now we have a new destination state that is 1, 0. Let's see what happens to the state 1, 0 for all the possible input values. If you have a 0, you are in 1, you go back to 0, and you produce 1 as an output. So this 1 as an output from 0 will send us to 1, producing 0 as an output. So now we go to 0, 1. And we produce a zero. If we get a one and we are in one, we stay in one, we produce one, and we go to one, and we produce zero. So with the one, we go to one, one, and we produce a zero. And, and then you can keep computing on this new state and this new state, and you will get the remaining set of uh, transitions for update function definitions, okay? So, this is almost equivalent to the procedure that is given here, okay? Although, you will notice that I'm not computing all the possible states of the composition as it is recommended there, okay? There it is recommended to compute all the possible combinations of any state in A with any state in B. And this will be all the possible states for the composite. And to draw a circle for all of them. And then for each state, consider all the possible inputs to A, find the corresponding next state for A, find the corresponding out of output of A, which becomes the input to B, find the corresponding next state to B, and the output of B. Now, the output of B is also going to be the output of the composition, and the next state of A, next state of B, is going to be the next state for the composition. Okay? So, okay, this is the same example, unit delay with itself, that I had on the whiteboard. You can see here on the slide. Okay? And... Incidentally, this is the same two-unit delay that was in the slides yesterday, okay? Now, the, the way I was writing the composition on the whiteboard is slightly different from what I saw I showed in the previous slide, meaning that I didn't compute all the possible states at the beginning, okay? But I just started from the initial state, and then I was trying to understand what are the states that are actually reachable in the composition. This is because some of the states that are resulting from the Cartesian product of all the states in A for all the states in B may not be reachable in the composition. And therefore, it is a waste of time if you pre-compute all the possible states. Okay? So, okay, should take away the animation from there because it's, it's really messed up. Okay, so let's do this example next, which is slightly more Okay, let's compute the composition of these two machines A and B. Okay. Uh, why don't you try why don't you try to do it on your own for two or three minutes? and then I'll do it on the one. How many states will be in the composition? Are they all reachable? That's not difficult to, to, to figure out if they are reachable. It's actually pretty easy here. Reason about the properties of the outputs that can be generated from machine A. All the possible outputs of machine A have one very special property. 
Once you find that property, you may figure out that some of the states of B are not reachable if the inputs are coming from the outputs of A. Is it possible for machine A to produce an output that has two ones in a row? Clearly not. How can you get to state C in machine B if you cannot produce two ones in a row? There's no way. Okay? So the composition is actually going to have only four reachable states. It's going to be very simple. I'm going step by step. So the initial state will be clearly A A. Right? If you have a zero, machine A will stay in A, produces an output zero. Zero is an input to machine B, will make machine B stay in A and produce a zero. So if you have a zero, you stay in A B. With the one, machine A is going to B produce a zero. The zero is going to make machine B stay in A and produce a zero. So with the one, you go to B A. And produce a zero. Now from B A, if you have a zero, you go back to A, you produce a one. Uh, a with 1 goes to B and produces 0. So now you go to A, B and produce 0. If you are in B, A, B, A and you get as an input 1, B is going to stay in B, you produce 0, A is going to stay in A. So you stay in B, A, and again it produces you. So now we need to consider A, B. If you are if you're in A, B, and you get a zero, you stay in A, you produce zero. With a zero from B, you go back to A, and you produce zero. So you go back to A, A, zero, zero. If you are in AB and you get 1, you go in B, you produce 0, and from B you go to A and you produce 0. So you now go to BA. There it is. That's about it. There is no other transition that is possible. So now, how about the other states? This is kind of interesting. So what is missing here is, of course, BB. And then you have C there. So you have right in here, AC and BC. Let's see for a second what happens if this state will be reachable somewhere or somehow. Okay? Where do you go from BB? From BB, if you get a zero, you go to A, you produce one, and with the one, you go to C and you produce one. So now you go to AC with one.
With the one from B, B, you stay in B, you produce zero. With the zero, you go back to A and you produce a zero. So now you go to B, A. Like this. I got AC. AC, if you have a zero, you stay in A. Zero. C with a zero, you go in B and B produce zero. So you go in A, B, and the output is zero. If you have a 1 from AC, you go to B, B, and the output is zero. And next from BC, if you have 0, you go to A, C. And if you have 1, you stay in B, B. Uh, one, zero, C, zero. Okay. Which is in a way kind of strange. <laughs> In the end, what you have is you have two set of states. One that is the set here. There is the one, the, the set of states that can be reached from the initial state AA. And then you have another set of states. That are not reachable from AA. But if what, for whatever reason, you would end up in one of the states, you can stay within the set, but at some point you can get out. Once you get out, you never go back in. Okay? It's a little bit as if this set will be stable, and this will be a set from which you can only get out and never come back. And this is the same you find in the slides. So in reality, as you can see, not only all the states with C are, are not reachable, but also BB is not reachable, okay? which is not intuitive right away from the state machine descriptions. Okay? Now, a few additional information. This is basically all there is to know, to, to know about this, this series composition. It's, it's not very complicated. The, the only other thing that you need to, to carry with you is this concept that whenever you are composing two machines, the result of the composition is a new machine that has a number of states equal to the product of the number of states of the original machines. Okay? So if you compose three machines with six states, Six, 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 the result is going to be six to the third power. Okay? Which which grows pretty quickly very large. Okay? This phenomenon is also called the state explosion. Whenever you combine state machines, the number of states grows very quickly. Okay? So this is exactly the same concept that we said in words before. On its own, machine B, of course, all of the states of machine B are reachable. But if you compose it with machine A, machine A is going to restrict the set of possible inputs to B. And because of this restriction, not all of the, all of the states of B are, are reachable anymore. And so not all the states of the com composition are reachable anymore. 
Now, of course, you can have multi more complicated connections like this, like forking or partly series, partly parallel. Uh, but the idea, more or less, is that the result of the composition is completely exactly the same. Okay? The states are still the Cartesian product of the state sets. The initial state is still the union of the initial state for A and the initial state of B. In this case, of course, when you compute the update function, it's going to be slightly more complicated because now the input to B are not simply the output of A, but need to be composed with all the possible set of inputs that are coming from XB external. Okay? Other than that, the procedure is exactly the same. I'm skipping this names. Uh, pretty much this is the same way you will find when you when you model this is state flow, you will find that the inputs to the machines A and B are coming through connections that are called also ports. Port is a name you saw support in SysML that is very quickly abused in, in modeling. And it's it's basically by itself is simply indicating a connection point within one element of the model and other elements of it. Okay? Uh, okay. Yes? When we combine two this machine, you see the number of things you compile. Not all the states seem to be reachable. You may be lucky and none of the states are reachable, but this is by no means guaranteed. Okay. So the, the, the state machine that we get could uh, be could have less state than the carbon multiply of the It could have less reachable states than simply the product of the number of the states of the composites. That that is true, but it you cannot always count on that. If you, if you swap machine B and machine A, what you get as the result of the composition is something that is completely different. Okay. This, in general, again, remember, system composition amounts to composition of functions. So, in general, if you compute f of g x is different from g of f x, right? So, state machines are nothing else than systems. So, in general, if you swap A and B, the result is going to be different. Okay? Now, of course, I don't need to tell you what happens when you compute, when you connect three machines in a row. Okay? Uh, you can basically, and again, since it is again function composition, you can first merge A and B and then merge B and C. This is you can do. Uh, then, so, I'm sorry, and then merge the composite A and B with C. Or you can compute the result of the composition right away by basically applying the same operation rule that we applied. Now, interesting stuff. Uh, so hang on, let me see. Well, let, let, let's go through through the slides in the order. Uh, I don't know if there's something on the parallel composition, but, but that's going to be. It's going to be easy. If it's not here, we will simply have an example and then move forward. So, the real trick is when you have feedback loop compositions. We already said that for synchronous reactive systems, whenever you have a feedback loop, in general, you may have a fixed point equation that you need to solve, and this may be a problem. Okay, and this is, there is no exception whenever you are connecting state machines, for example. Okay, feedback loop compositions of state machines can also give problems. 
So again, this slide is still about composing simple functional blocks. So if you simply take a functional block that is computing the square, basically this will result in an equation that is x equal x square. If you solve this, you're going to have two solutions. If you have this, Functional block, the fixed point equation is x equal x squared plus 1, which is a second degree equation which doesn't have any real solutions. Okay? And if you have this form here, then you're lucky and you have a single solution every time. Okay? In general, when the right hand side is linear in x, then it is okay, you only have one solution. Okay? So, Let's move on. <clears throat> what is that we do when we compose a state machine with itself? Uh, again, we said before the other day that we are also interested in adding the absent symbol to the possible inputs and the possible outputs and include also the stuttering reaction. So, given this assumption, the stuttering reaction is always safe when you have a feedback loop composition, but the stuttering reaction is not very meaningful. Okay? It's just an abstraction that we created for mathematical purposes, for ensuring that the formal composition of state machines is always well defined. Okay? So, we're interested in reactions that do not include the stuttering symbol, the absent symbol. Okay? So, First prerequisite for, for example, for having the simplest connection of a state machine with itself, like this, is of course that the input alphabet is a subset of the output alphabet. Okay? This is pretty, pretty simple, and I don't think there is anything new that needs to be said about this. Okay? Then you express the update function, like this. Only now the inputs are the same as the outputs. And so here is our update function that is a fixed point equation. Of course, we also have the states, but yn is on the left hand side and the right hand side. Okay. So, how do we solve this? Well, formally, if we connect a state machine with itself like this, we don't have any inputs left for the composition. So we will need an additional fictitious input to compute the reactions. And we will assume that the machine is going to compute the new reaction every time we get this fictitious input that is called react. Okay. So Let's consider, for example, this state machine. Is it going to give us a single solution to the fixed point equation? How do we verify this? Well, we, we verify this exhaustively. Okay? What we do is we start from the initial state and we try all the possible inputs. And then we move forward to all the other reachable states from the initial state. And we make sure that for all the possible inputs, there is always one and only one valid solution. Okay, so let's do like this here. The initial state is one. The possible inputs are true or false. Okay, if the input is true, then from the initial state one, we have this transition here which is going to produce an output false, which needs to be the same as the input. But since we assume that the input is true, then this cannot be a solution. Okay? So now let's consider false as an input. If false is an input, then this transition will be taken, and it will produce false as an output, which is good because indeed false as an output is the same as the input. So from state one, we have one and only one possible solution, that is input false and output false. 
So, so far so good. And if this is true, then we end up in state 2. Now in state 2, same thing. If the input is true, then this is taken. The output is true, which is the same as the input, so this is a valid solution. Do we have more than one valid solution? Let's check the other possible input, which is false. If false is the input, then true is the output, which cannot be the same as the input. So this is not a valid solution. So even for state 2, we have one and only one possible valid solution. So this is good. So the result of the composition is indeed legal, meaning that the fixed point equation has one and only one solution, and it is oops. Well, and it is the set of the two transitions from one to two and two to one. So this machine, if you connect in a feedback loop, is going to react oscillating between the states 1 and 2. And this behavior is uniquely defined. There is a single possible solution, so it is OK. We say that this feedback loop connection is legal. OK? Or, if you prefer, that the composition is well formed, meaning that the fixed point equation is 1 and only one possible solution. Now, if you consider this other state machine here, uh, you will see, okay, this is, no, this is exactly the same. So, yeah. if you consider this other state machine, this is almost the same as the one before. So you have one possible solution in state one, that is the transition false false. But once you are in state B, in state B there is no possible solution. Because if the input is true, then the output needs to be false, which cannot be because the output needs to be the same as the input. If the input is false, then the output is going to be true, which cannot be because the output again needs to be the same as the input. So this machine, if you connect in a feedback loop, is going to have no solution for state 2. So the composition is not well formed. Okay? And again, you may have a state machine that has more than one solution, like this one here. From state 2, you can either have this solution here, false, false, or this solution here, true, true. Okay? So even when we have more than one possible solution, we will discard the composition because it is not well formed. What we get is not a function anymore. Now, there is one case in which we can always be sure that the feedback loop composition is legal. And it is when in any cycle in your system, there is at least one machine that has a more type behavior for which the outputs are determined by the state, not by the inputs. Okay? So let's consider this in a more general term. What we're interested in are systems. Systems that are composed by connecting state machines. So now you imagine your system as a network, in which you are connecting subsystems that are state machines. And these connections can be arbitrary. Okay? So you may have a system connection like this. Okay? If you now consider the composite, this, this thing here, as a single system, you see that inside you have several loops. You have one loop here, you have another loop here, and you have another loop which is, oh, this is okay, one more, this is, yeah, you have two loops like this. Okay? So you may ask yourself, well, is this connection well formed? 
In order for it to be well formed, it is sufficient that in each and every loop there is at least one more type state machine. So if this state machine is a more type, then you can answer right away yes. This composition is fine, it's well formed. Okay? Now, before we move on to the details of why this is the case, consider that the delay state machine that we described the other day for binary inputs, but of course you can have a delay for any arbitrary set of inputs, is always a more machine. So, to make sure that the composition is well formed, it is sufficient to ensure that there is one delay unit on every cycle. Which you can also see the other way around. If the composition is not well formed, you can fix it by adding one delay in each and every cycle. Okay? Which is something that you will probably find later on when, when you're working with state flow. Okay? At some point you may find in simulating state flow a message that says the system has algebraic loops. So I cannot generate code. And the way to fix it is you add the delay. Of course, I mean, fix quote unquote, because when you add the delay, you change the behavior. So you need to make sure that you understand what are the consequences. Okay. okay. In any case, let's see formally what is what is in this lab. So if at least one of these machines is a more type. More type means also that the output is determined by the state. Or if you prefer state de determined output. Then the feedback composition is always well formed, means that for all the reachable states in this particular machine and for all the possible inputs, then the result of the update output function is always going to be the same. Depends only from the state. Okay? In the state, the composition can be computed basically iteratively, starting from the output of the more machine and going back through the cycle. Okay? Uh, let me go back here to the whiteboard. Let's assume the situation is like this. Okay? And let's also label the states, these are, this is machine A, B, and C. Okay? And we said that machine C is of more time. Let's also assume that we know at some point in time what are the states in which these three machines are. Okay? Or if you prefer, you can reason iteratively starting from the set of initial states and then constructing all the other original states. So at some point, A is in state SA, B is in state SB, and C is in state SC. Okay. Can we determine what is going to be the result of this reaction from this point? Well, we leverage the information that C is of type more, and we know what is the state of C. It is SC. So if we know what is the state of C, we also know what are the outputs of C, because the outputs are determined by the state. So this is going to be YC1, and this is going to be YC2. We know them, because they are only determined by the state. And now we move back. If we know YC2, then we know what is being put here. So we can compose with all the possible inputs that are coming from these other two inputs, from all the possible input values that are coming from this two. And we compute the reaction of A from SA to SA prime for all the possible inputs. And therefore, we now know also what are the outputs of A, Y, E1, Y, E2. So now we go to B. We know what is Y, A1. We know what is the other input here, and we can compute the reaction of B. So we now know also YB prime 
and YB, sorry, YB1 and YB2. So now we can go back to C, and now we know all the inputs to C, which are YA2 and YB2, and we can also compute the transition to C. Okay? So the sequence says we start from the Mohr type machine and we compute all its outputs. We know them because they are determined by the state. Once we know all these outputs, for the next machine in the cycle, we will know all its inputs. So now we can compute its next state and its outputs, and so on, moving along the loop, until we go back to our more machine, for which now we know all the inputs, we know what is the state, and we can also compute the state transition. So the state update is computed at the end for the more machine. So let's see the result when we apply this composition to one of the machines that we saw before could not be connected with itself in a self loop. So if you remember, we have uh, what it is? this one, I guess. Yeah, this machine here could not be connected in a self loop because there will be no valid solution for state 2. Okay? So now we connect it with this other machine that is more type, state determined. This composition is well formed. What is the result? Well, let's start from 1, 1. Let me, let me go up with this so I can use the white. Well, okay, it's probably as much as any. Uh, so at the beginning, we are in 1 1. Okay? How do we compute the reaction? We start from the machine that for, that for which the outputs are determined by the state. This one. We are in state 1, so the output is going to be false. So now we know that this is false. But this is also the input to this other one. So if we are in 1 and the input is false, and this is taken, the next state is going to be 2, the output is going to be false here, and now we go back to this, if the input is false, then this is the transition for the first one. So as the result of the composition, the two machines go into 2-2, two, two, and the output is false. So for 1-1, one, one, we go into 2-2 two, two, when we react, and the output is false. Now what happens in 2-2? Two, two? Again, we start from here. If we are in 2, then the output is now true. So the output is true. If we are in true in two and the output is true, then we go back to one and we produce false. And if we were in two and we get false, then we stay in two. So we now go into two one. We produce true. Once you are in 2, 1, the output is still going to be true. You are in 1 with true, you stay in 1, and the output is false. False here, we take this, and the output is true. So from 2, 1, when you react, this is what is going to happen. 
So the result of this feedback compo loop composition is this thing here. From the initial state 1-1, one, one, you react and you go to 2-2 two, two, and produce false. Then you react and you go to 2-1 and you produce true, and then you stay in 2-1 forever. And at any reaction, at every reaction you produce true. Okay? Now, it's really not important if the behavior that we get as the result of the composition is nice or not nice, if we like it or not. What is important here is that it is always determined when this is of more time. Okay? So this is exactly the same type of description you get from the slides. Okay, well, of course, if you think about all the possible states that are the result of the product of the state sets, then you also get one, two that is not reachable. <laughs> and of course, the fact that if you have a more machine, then the result of the composition is well formed, it is a sufficient, but it's not a necessary condition. You can always have, we can, you can also have well-formed compositions of machines that are not of type more, okay, for which the, the output is not stated. Like this one, but also one of the ones, uh, one machine that I showed previously in the slides. Uh, feedback with inputs, small variation, you need to consider all the possible inputs together with the composition. I can skip constructive procedure here. Well, no, I believe this is interesting. So let, let's say also something about this. And you may find an analogy with what we said a few days ago on how to compute the output signals for a synchronous model. as the result of a fixed point equation. So what you can do is you can compute the result of a composition also according to a procedure that is called constructive procedure. What is that you do? Well, you begin with a set of values that are at the beginning unknown for all these signals that are not specified. So you have your network of blocks or subsystems in your system, at the beginning you assume that all the signal values that are not constant are unknown. Okay? And then, starting from any system, you try to understand if any of the outputs can be determined. If you, if you can change some of the signals that are unknowns, into values that you can actually determine, that are defined. And then you propagate these values and you update correspondingly the state machines with the newly acquired signal values. And you repeat the process until either all the signals are specified or you cannot go any further. Okay? If all the signal values can be specified, then you can actually compute the solution to the composition problem. So this is an example. Let's assume we have this feedback loop composition here. Well, th this is actually pretty easy. If I gave you something like this in, in any test, you will need to say right away that the loop is all, only involves the second output of the machine, and the second output signal is actually state determined. So the composition is always going to be legal. Okay? But the idea is that in a system like this, at the beginning, you don't know what are the values of these two outputs, and therefore you also don't know what is this input here. 
But if you start from state A, then you know that if you're in state A, the second output is determined. It's actually going to be 1. So now you have the first output that is not determined, but the first second output you know it's going to be 1. So now you propagate this 1 here. And based on the new knowledge that the input is 1, you can actually know that also the first output is going to be at 1. Because this is the very transition. So now you also determine the first output together with the second one, and you know all the signal values in the system from state A. And you go into state B and you repeat the procedure. Okay? Okay, now, what is left here? What is left is, how about the parallel composition of state machines? Now, parallel composition is pretty easy. Okay? So, basically, the set of states for the composite is simply still going to be the set product of the states of the first machine and the state of the second machine. The initial state is still going to be the pair, initial state of the first machine and initial state of the second machine. And the update function is even easier to determine because now the two updates for A and B can be computed in parallel. They are independent. So you simply compute the next state as applying the next state of A and the next state of B separately. And a new pair of next states will be the next state for the composite. And the same for the output. Now, again, the message is that when you compose in parallel state machines, the number of states of the composition is going to be the product of the number of states of the components. Okay? Okay, so we're going to be back to some of these concepts in the next hour when we talk about hierarchical state machines. <coughs> but if you have any questions now, yes. Uh, is there any command that uh, whether the input is true or false, that the state value needs to be changed? It, it, it is possible that you stay within a given state. So both one, or both true and false one? Yes, or both true and false, yes. May also be possible. Everything okay? Okay, so we make a break, then we go through to hierarchical state machines. We will see an application of some of the composition rules that we discussed today to hierarchical state machines. And then fundamentally, state flow it is a tool that provides you, gives you hierarchical state machines, way of modeling hierarchical state machines. Okay, so let's break here. Thank <laughs> you.